Powered flight has evolved in the history of the natural world four times independently. Once in insects and then thrice in vertebrates, in birds, in bats which are flying mammals and pterosaurs which were flying reptiles. Pterosaurs once dominated the skies and they are often mistaken to have been flying dinosaurs but they were actually not dinosaurs at all. They were just reptiles that flew and lived alongside dinosaurs. Their giant wings were like bats wings. They were made of stretched skin and muscle. Now recent findings this month show that pterosaurs actually had colored feathers and these feathers were not really used for flying. So why would a giant flying animal have colored feathers that were not used for flight? Let's take a look. Why would flight evolve in the first place? A lot of evolution is characterized by protection from predators, but more importantly, movement towards available resources. That's why sea mammals started to walk on land. The hippo today actually has a common ancestor with the whale. The ancestor was thought to be semi-aquatic about 55 million years ago. But where did this semi-aquatic ancestor come from? Why it actually came from land. In fact, it came from the Indian subcontinent land specifically. All cetaceans or the order of whales, porpoises and dolphins, they all evolved from ungulates or from land animals with hooves like deer, horses, zebras, cows, giraffe, etc. Specifically, these marine mammals' ancestor was a small deer-like animal that roamed the land which today is the Indian subcontinent. So the availability of food is what drove this ungulate to go into water and then eventually the ancestor of the hippo to walk back onto land. When there is more food available in other evolutionary niches, there is less competition and these animals that move on to occupy these new spaces can actually grow here. And boy did whales grow. This is the same reason why reptiles that walked on land started to fly. Pterosaurs existed along with dinosaurs from about 230 million years ago to 66 million years ago when the asteroid hit the earth. They are the earliest vertebrates to have evolved powered flight. Their wings were made of a membrane of skin tissue and muscle. They were initially small in size but then they quickly diversified and went on to become the largest flying creatures of all time. Fossil evidence indicates that the pterosaurs had pycno or pycno fibers which are small hair-like filaments, the early versions of feathers. They were primarily used for insulation and just made the animal fuzzy looking, not feathery looking which meant that these reptiles were also warm-blooded. Previous research has found that these fibers came in a variety of shapes and structures and researchers thought that they were precursors to feathers. In the latest study, researchers analyzed the partial skull of one of the handful of pterosaur fossils that we have. Pterosaur fossils are extremely rare because their bones were so light that they would not fossilize well. The researchers studied this fossil that is dated to 113 million years ago from the Brazil area. And this animal, this specific species also had a head crest. The team studied the fossil and observed what looked like feathers at the base of the crest. And they discovered, in fact, that there were two different types of feathers on this pterosaur's head. Smaller, unbranched, single filaments that were darker and wiry and larger, branched filaments like today's modern bird feathers that were lighter and fluffy. Both were found at the base of the head crest of this flying reptile. So, pterosaurs actually had feathers, not just pycno fibers. The branched feathers branched all the way along the length but did not have secondary branches like today's birds do. So these feathers were definitely not equipped for flight. But these feathers were dense and they were distributed uniformly all over the body. The team then used powerful electron microscopes to study these feathers. Within these feathers, they found something rather surprising. They found small bits of the organelles that produce the pigment melanin, the one that gives us skin color, eye color and hair color. 
These organelles are called melanosome and the pterosaur feathers had plenty of them. This was completely unexpected. Not only did this giant flying reptile have feathers on its head and body, but these feathers were also colored and they were not used for flight. What's more, different types of feathers were colored differently. Scientists can tell this because today in birds, the feather color is linked to the shape of the melanosome. And in this fossil, different feathers had different shapes of melanosomes. This meant that different types of feathers had different colors and that the colors of these types of feathers were coded in their genes. These are the earliest versions of feathers found on planet Earth. These were not full feathers like birds have today and they were not used for flight. Yet, they were color-coded, indicating that from the earliest appearances of the feather, color played an important role. And why was coloring and patterning so important? For precisely the same reasons that it is important today. Colorful feathers are used for visual communication. Colors can tell how young or old an individual is, can be used to attract sexual mate, used for camouflage or to ward off predators and so on. So it appears that pterosaurs also used them for the same purpose. The findings are entirely consistent with findings from dinosaurs as well. When the first Jurassic Park came out, before the movie was released, velociraptors were thought to be the way that they are depicted in the film large with reptilian skin. But today, we know that they were the size of border collies and they were fluffy with lots of feathers. Today, we think the logic is that birds have feathers and reptiles have scales. But this is not true always and it hasn't been true through history. Feathers have played a prominent role even in reptiles before they did in birds. And the latest findings put an end to the raging debate about whether pterosaurs had feathers. The more we learn about these giant reptiles that roam the earth before the asteroid struck, the more we realize how different they are from today's reptiles and our understanding of them. Instead of scaly and hard, most of them are actually turning out to be quite colorful and fluffy.